So a bit of Islam has rubbed on me through osmosis. <laughs> I work with many, many Muslim brothers and sisters in this country. And I admire your way of life. Because from the time you wake up to the time you go to rest in the evening, you are governed by the holy book. And I've taken time to read the Quran. I have an English translation Quran. And the more I read the Quran, the more I see the Old Testament of the Bible. They are almost identical in many respects. The prophets and the history of religion and what messages they brought to humanity, warnings, directions. So if we live by the holy books, we'll have very few problems among us. Because most of the people who do those negative things, the strong negative influences coming into our country, they're all against the holy books. And we should resist them. We should live by the word of God. God made man, God made a woman, and that's what he intended it to be. And we must live that way. We come to the end of Ramadan. I want to urge Kenyans that the humility, the tranquility, the manner in which we have been each other's keeper through Ramadan should continue regardless of the season of our religious festivals. As Christians, we have also come through Easter. We had our own Lent which is similar to Ramadan, but not as strict. We keep uh, fasting for just about a week, largely on Fridays, but it is the same religion. Your Excellence, as I finish, I want to encourage Kenyans to impress God. In Parliament, Your Excellency, I have established a prayer room for Christians and a prayer room for Muslims. And I encourage our MPs that instead of shouting at each other on the floor of the house, go to the prayer room and sit and speak to your God. And your God will descend on you to tell you that raising your voice does not amount to winning the argument.